Now that we've talked about income statements and balance sheets, it's time to turn to the third financial statement, which is the statement of cash flows. Now, at first sight, the objectives in a statement of cash flows are pretty limited, right? If you look at the bottom line of a statement of cash flows, it seems like it's designed to explain how much the cash balance of a company changed during a period and why. But if we dig a little deeper, there's more information in a statement of cash flows about what you might ask. Well, first, it tells you how much cash this company made or had to pay out because of operations, cash flows from operations, how much cash this company invested back into its business or elsewhere, and how much cash this company raised or returned to both its debt and equity investors. I'm going to argue that those cash flows are going to be useful in much of financial analysis. Now, as you look at a statement of cash flows, there's one thing that separates a statement of cash flows from the other from the other financial statements. In a statement of cash flows, the sign tells you which direction the cash flow is. In other words, a positive cash flow will be shown as a positive number a negative cash flow will be shown as a negative number. You see, that makes sense. Why are you even saying it? Because the other financial statements don't follow this practice. Incidentally, the statement of cash flows also is look, looking at the business through the eyes of the equity investors. And you're going to see in a minute what I mean by this. If you look at the statement of cash flows in any company, it's broken down into three parts. The first section is usually cash flows from operations to equity investors. And again, I'm emphasizing the word equity investors, and you're going to see that detail play out. The second set of cash flows will be cash flows from investing, investing in assets, investing in, in the assets that are either operating assets or non-operating assets. And the third set of cash flows will be cash flows from financing. You see, what does that mean? But remember, there are two ways you can fund a business, debt or equity. In the third set of cash flows, you're going to see cash flows from debt, new debt you take on, cash flows to debt, debt you repay. Cash flows from equity, new equity issuances, cash flows to equity, dividend, uh, dividends and buybacks. And if you look at the net effect, it's a change in your cash balance. So let's break this down by starting with the cash flow from operations. The cash flow from operations usually starts with net income. And now you can see why I've been harping on the fact that statements of cash flows are measured through the eyes of equity investors. Net income is equity income. You start with net income. The proverbial bottom line in the income statement becomes the starting point for the cash flows from operations. Now, remember, to get a net income, you subtracted out expenses like depreciation and amortization. You're saying, so what? Those are accounting expenses, but they're not cash expenses. You haven't spent the money. So the first step in a statement of cash flows is you add back depreciation. You add back amortization. You add back any non-cash items you've expensed in the first place. The logic is these are, cash, these are not cash expenses. I haven't spent the money. And then you subtract out a whole series of items, including change in accounts receivable, change in inventory, change. You think, why am I doing this? Consolidated those line items represent the change in non-cash working capital. Let me repeat that again. They represent the change in non-cash working capital. You saying, why does that matter? Well, when you invest money in inventory, let's pick one of the working capital items. Let's suppose you increase your inventory holdings for whatever reason, for operating reasons. Remember, when you have more inventory, that's cash tied up. An increase in inventory is a decrease in your cash flows. An increase in accounts receivable is a decrease in your cash flows. In contrast, when you use more supplier credit, that's an increase in your cash flows. So when we look at non-cash working capital, we are in effect converting accrual income into cash income. Remember we said much of accounting is accrual accounting. You sell something on December 30th, you have to show revenues this year, even though you haven't been paid. Well, where does that, you haven't been paid show up, it shows up as accounts receivable. I describe working capital as a residue of accrual accounting. And what you're doing in the statement of cash flows by bringing in the change in non-cash working capital is you're making cash in, accrual income into cash income. So net income, you add back the non-cash charges, you subtract out the change in non-cash working capital, you come up with cash flows from operations. Just an aside, you can see this working capital effect is going to vary across businesses. In businesses that are working capital intensive, 
you can get a substantial cash outflow as you're growing because as you grow your non-cash working capital usually grows with you so when you go through the statement of cash flows one of the things you might want to focus on is how much cash flows are accruing from those working capital changes so it's cash flows from operations next cash flows from investing i'm going to break down the cash flows from investing into two groups the first is Cash flow from investing in operating assets. This would be if you're a manufacturing company, what you build, spend in building new factories, buying new equipment. But sometimes as you mature as a company, you might pay for some of those new, new equipment with old equipment you're selling off. So don't be surprised to see divestitures of old assets show up as part of the investing cash flows. What you're trying to capture is the net investment you're making in operating assets. Incidentally, if you choose to grow by acquiring other companies, you're going to see it as a cash acquisition as part of the statement of cash flows. So you consolidate those items, capital expenditures and plant and equipment or any other assets you need for long term growth. You net out those divestitures and you add on cash acquisitions, you get investment in operating assets. You say, what else can I invest in? You can invest in marketable securities. You can invest in whole in other companies. Those I'm going to classify as investment in non-operating assets. So when you look at the cash flows from investing, you might want to separate out those line items directly related to the operating uh, the operations of this company, and those line items that are for investments in non-operating assets. So now let's consolidate what we've talked about so far. The section on investing cash flows tells you how much the company is putting back into its business. The investments you make in operating assets tell you how aggressively the company is trying to grow its operations. And why does it matter? If your company has plans to grow in the future, its operating income and its revenues to grow, it has to invest in operating assets. In fact, one line item you might want to compare or two line items you might want to compare to each other is what you have as depreciation in your operating cash flows and what you have as capital expenditure in your investing cash flows. Because remember, depreciation is the depletion of your assets and capital expenditures, the adding on to your assets. Growing companies, capital expenditures should be much greater than depreciation. One other item related to operating activities, I said that if you grow by acquiring other companies, it will be treated as a cash outflow if it's a cash acquisition. One of the limitations of statements of cash flows is some companies grow, but they skip the cash step. They do by paying for those acquisitions with shares. If you acquire other companies by using stock or shares, it will not show up in your statement of cash flows. And that's something you have to think about when you think about what am I missing when I look at a statement of cash flows. You're saying, why do I care about investment in non-operating activities? Because those investments can also generate income. The only difference is the income they generate shows up below the operating income line. So if you're a company that invests in marketable securities, the income from those marketable securities will show up or show up below the operating income line. If you're a company that invests in pieces of other companies, minority holdings, the income from those minority holdings will show up as income below the operating income line. So the investing activities section of the cash flows tells you something about what the company is putting in to get income in the future. Which brings me to my third and final section, cash flows from financing. Remember again, there are two ways of financing a company, debt or equity. So I'm going to break down the cash flows from financing into cash flows to or from debt and cash flows to and from equity. Let's start with cash flows to and from debt. When you repay debt, that's a cash outflow. You're saying, what about interest expenses? Remember, interest expenses are already cleaned up for. Why? Because I started the cash flows from operations with net income. So the only cash flow from debt or to debt that I haven't dealt with is debt repayments. Debt repayments are cash outflows. But if I issue new debt or raise new debt, that's a cash inflow. The net cash flow from debt is therefore the difference between those two numbers. Now, sometimes in statements of cash flows, you'll see this broken down to short term debt and long term debt. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's cash in or cash out. Say, so what about equity? When you make new equity issuances, either in an initial public offering or a secondary offering, those equity issuances represent cash inflows. If you pay dividends, it's obviously a cash outflow. So is buying back stock. In fact, when you see companies buying back stock, this is the place you will see how much they spent on those stock buybacks. The net cash flow from equity is the net effect of equity issuances set off against dividends and stock buybacks. So when you look at debt cash flows, focus in on debt repayments and debt issuances because interest is already taken care of. 
And here's something to remember. When a company embarks on a plan to either pay down its debt or increase its debt over time, it's also saying something about the cash flows that will happen over time. An LBO, where a company has a lot of debt right now and wants to pay the debt down, you can almost guarantee that for the next few years, cash flows from debt are going to be negative. Why? Because you're going to repay debt. On the other hand, if you have a lightly levered company, company with very little debt saying they're going to increase their debt over time, you can count on the fact that those debt cash flows are going to be cash inflows in the future. Now, when you look at equity cash flows, I mean, the stock issuances are obvious. Dividends and buybacks are interesting because until the 1980s, Dividends were the primary way in which companies returned cash to their stockholders. Starting in the mid-1980s and building up through the last 40 years, companies have increasingly, especially in the U.S., shifted away from dividends to buybacks. Remember, from the, persp- from the viewpoint of the company, it's cash leaving the company or they pay it as dividends or buybacks. You as a stockholder might have different views on dividends and buybacks, but the cash flow effect of dividends and buybacks is effectively the same. Cash leaves the company, equity will decrease. Now, whether it decreases as a treasury stock or whether it decreases by taking those shares off the books can be different for different companies. The cash flow effect though of dividends and buybacks can be disparate for different stockholders. And here's what I mean by that. With dividends, Every stockholder receives a piece of the cash flows, right? If you own shares, you get dividends. With buybacks, only those shareholders who sell their shares back get the cash. That might sound a little unfair, but those people who don't sell their shares back receive a bonus. So the bonus is their stock price goes up. So in a sense, dividends and buybacks are both cash returns. They just have different consequences for investors. Now, one final piece of data that you can get out of the statement of cash flows that right now you might say, who cares? But later on in financial analysis, you're going to see this matter is a potential dividend. If you give me the statement of cash flows for a company, I can tell you how much this company could have paid in dividends or could have used to buy back stock. It, the fact that it didn't is a different issue, but these are potential dividends. You're saying, how am I going to get that? Here's what you will do. Start with the net income, add back the non-cash charges, subtract other change in working capital. In other words, start with the cash flow from operations that you see in your in your statement of cash flows. Then go to the investing activity section and focus on only on the operating investing, capital expenditures, net of, uh, net of you know, divestitures of assets and cash acquisitions. That's going to give you your cash flows to equity before debt. If you raise debt, remember that's a cash inflow to equity investors. You repay debt, that's a cash outflow. So take out just the cash flows associated with debt. You get what's called free cash flow to equity after debt payments. That is potentially what you can afford to pay out in dividends. I entirely understand why companies might not want to pay that out in dividends or used to buy back stock or sometimes why some companies may return more than that amount. But this is what you can afford to. And it's all in the statement of cash flows. So I hope you found the session useful because as I said, the statement of cash flows is is the one accounting statement where honesty is put above accounting rules. You basically see the numbers as they are. So take advantage of it. And I hope you found the session useful. Thank you for listening.